Matumba Mandota, 12K MMR player, TI winner, expert sailor, and arrow key user. It might sound stupid at first to move your hand from here, where you're pressing your spell hotkeys, to all the way over here, where you're pressing your camera hotkeys, and then all the way back whenever you want to move your camera. But it's not actually quite that simple. There are some clear advantages to this type of camera movement. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that there is a lion and a Sven wandering through the jungle, and then they end up running into each other. Naturally, the lion will freak out and press hex, and Sven will storm hammer. So, what happens here? Who gets stunned first? Well, Lion's Hex has a 500 cast range, and Sven's Stormhammer has a 600 cast range. So, based on cast range alone, Sven would stun Lion first. But in Dota, spells are obviously quite a bit more complicated than just their cast range. Lion Hex, for example, has a 0 second cast point, meaning that it takes 0 seconds to cast, and it's instant. Sven Stun, on the other hand, has a 0.2 second or 200 millisecond cast point. That makes the question, can Lion walk 100 units in 200 milliseconds? The short answer is, as a support, probably not. It would take about 270 milliseconds for Lion to walk up to the Sven. And so, Sven would always get his stun off on the Lion. But this just isn't how the world works, even if we would like it to work that way. This scenario assumes that you have virtually zero ping, and that's just not practical. If Sven has 80 milliseconds ping, then Lion has 280 milliseconds to get his stun off, and so the 270 millisecond walking delay is perfectly fine, and Sven will not be able to stun Lion. In fact, even if you have literally zero ping, the average human reaction time is somewhere around 250 milliseconds, but your reaction time is probably quite a bit better than this because you're a gamer, and gamers have above average reaction time. It's just about the only thing we're above average at, but we'll take any win. But this is something we can actually test right now. What is your reaction time? When this box changes from red to green, pause the video as soon as you can and take note of the number that's on the screen. Chances are when you pause the video, if you pause the video, that number was somewhere around 200 milliseconds, and that's because, like I said, gamers are above average when it comes to reaction time. Factoring this number into our Sven Lion scenario, it would mean that Sven has 400 milliseconds to react and stun the Lion. But Lion only needs 270 milliseconds to walk up and hex the Sven. So, if you're Sven in this scenario, you're not going to get your stun off on Lion. Hello, blue background, different shirt Jenkins here, and I do want to pause the video quickly to just point out that these reaction time and ping-related delays would obviously apply to both parties, both the Sven and the Lion. But just for simplicity of making this argument, let's assume that Lion pre-casted his hex. So these delays just don't matter for him, they only matter for Sven. Okay, thanks me three minutes ago who put on a different shirt to make it look like it was another day. What great production value. Anyway, back to it. You're probably wondering where camera movement comes into all of this, and don't worry, we're getting there. Let's assume that this is now a support Sven with an ether lens. This gives him an extra 225 stun range, bringing the total time that he has to react to the Lion Hex from a measly 270 milliseconds to a whopping 900 milliseconds. Let's say, just so we have even numbers, that Sven is on 100 ping and has 200 milliseconds reaction time. Factoring in the 200 millisecond cast point, it would take Sven a total of 500 milliseconds to respond to Lion's Hex, which is well within our 900 millisecond react window. And precisely here is where the problem of camera movement comes in. When moving our camera with edge pan, we first have to drag our mouse cursor to the edge of the screen, then to the hero's location on the screen once we've moved our camera. Doing a few tests of this on my own with the hero at the center of the screen, at a stupidly fast 2050 mouse DPI, I might add, I would sometimes misclick my target at first, and it would take 500 milliseconds to use Stormhammer. Other times, I would target my mouse cursor perfectly, and it would take only 300 milliseconds to cast Stormhammer. In other words, if Sven misclicked just by a bit, his total time to stun Lion would be 1000 milliseconds, an entire second. This is well above our 900 millisecond threshold, and so Sven would not be able to get his stun off in time, even with a damn ether lens. And if Sven doesn't misclick, that extra 300 millisecond delay puts us at a total of 800 milliseconds to cast Stormhammer. 
meaning that yes, he will stun the lion, but Stormhammer has a travel time, and in that travel time, Lion is easily able to hex Sven. With Camera Grip, the problem is exactly the same, because your mouse is locked in a position while dragging the camera around, meaning that it will end up at the edge of the screen resulting in the exact same delay. With arrow keys, however, you can move your cursor around while you are moving the camera, meaning that you can completely avoid the possibly 500 millisecond delay that would result from moving your mouse from the edge of the screen. So, Matumba Man, who uses arrow keys, would always be able to stun the lion in this scenario without getting hexed. And I, Jenkins Dota, who uses edge pan, could not. At this point, it's worth restating that moving your hand from left to right physically every single time you want to move your camera is obviously going to have some pretty ridiculous delays. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to have your arrow key camera movement over here. Instead, you want it over here where your hand is already going to be. So the optimal thing is to use WASD. The trade-off here is that you are trading some crucial hotkeys for good camera movement. There are some really awkward sequences of actions that you can come up with that are borderline impossible to press. For example, if you use quick cast and you want to self cast a spell while moving your camera to the top left, this is what your hand will look like using WASD. Obviously, this is not so good. So, WASD can be quite limiting in terms of hotkeys and hand position, but it's nothing entirely unsolvable and it has an advantage when it comes to reaction time. Before we go, I do want to mention some of the advantages of the other types of camera movement, just because I feel like it's important. Uh, so camera grip is one of the top camera movements that pro players are switching to currently because it lets you move the camera with your literal hand. If you move the mouse a lot, your camera will move a lot. If you move the mouse a little, your camera will move a little. And so this gives you an insane amount of precision when compared to the other types of camera movement. Edge panning, however, is definitely the easiest type of camera movement because it doesn't involve you pressing a hotkey in order to move the camera. So I can literally scratch my balls with my left hand and still move the camera around, and that's pretty easy. So what's the conclusion here? Basically, use whatever the hell you're comfortable with because chances are there are some benefits that you're getting out of it that you wouldn't be getting out of some other type of camera movement. But if I had one recommendation that's not just, hey dude, keep doing whatever you're doing, it would be this. Pick a second type of camera movement and try using that for a different style of movement. For me, I use edge pan to move my camera large distances, and then I use camera grip to do little micro movements with my camera. So outside of the laning stage, when I'm moving my camera a lot, I edge pan. But in the laning stage, I use camera grip because at this phase of the game, the camera moves a lot less, but the exact position of your camera is very important so that you don't miss range creeps or get ganked. Anyway, that's it for this video. Shoutouts to Aoi69000 who initially taught me a bunch of shit about camera movement and basically helped me come up with the idea of the video. And shoutouts to BSJ for moving to Europe.